Welcome to lecture 25 of ECE 4305 Software Defined Radio Systems and Analysis. In this lecture, we'll look at several examples of advanced software defined radio implementations from around the world. Just like in the movie Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. So in the wireless communications research and development world, um, there is extensive work being done on trying to push the current state of the art in terms of coming up with new techniques for transmitting data reliably, efficiently, and in, uh, at very high speeds from point A to point B. Um, many researchers and developers uh, use theoretical concepts like math, uh, uh, mathematical expressions and the like in order to drive and find out what the performance would be um, uh, from a theoretical standpoint, but those situations, like those uh, mathematical expressions, usually are intractable unless you make uh, a number of simplifying assumptions, in which case accuracy could potentially be lost. Other folks, in addition to sometimes um, the theoretical assessment of a communication system, uh, might also use computer simulations. And there are a variety of tools out there that allow you to simulate um, uh, one communication system under um, some sort of uh, some sort of situation with a channel, maybe multipath, maybe it's rising fading, or or like it could be a network of wireless devices all working each other, with each other, perhaps in a mo mobile environment, maybe it's a satellite communications link um, or something similar. But again. Uh, people wonder about the accuracy as well as the complexity of the simulation model, which could take uh, quite a long time, and, 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 and reproducibility, which um, simulation models do a great job, but again, like how accurate is it? So in the community, um, the third, ca uh, third way of trying to prove whether a design or a concept or an idea uh, has any merit or potential uh, to further advance the current state of the art is to employ that design on a hardware prototype and experiment with it potentially over the air. And that's where software defined radio over the last decade and a half to two decades has really um, made great advances in terms of education such as this course and others, as well as with researchers, developers, and others who want to prototype um, uh, new ideas in um, digital communications, wireless communications, wireless networking, but do it on a platform that is flexible and uh, ready to use in terms of prototyping. Like the last thing you want to do is design custom RF components and, and, and radios in general, um, only to find out that it does not work. It, uh, so it's a high risk venture. Nowadays, given the costs and availability of these software defined radio platforms, almost anybody can uh, build their own uh, wireless communication system uh, using SDR technology. So as a result, um, there are a number of efforts that have uh, uh, that that were started years ago, and some that still continue to this day, that uh, provide SDR solutions for um, uh, the wireless experimentalist and practitioner in order to evaluate and test new ideas and concepts. So. In order to implement um, a software-defined radio test bed, if you will, to test out these ideas, um, first of all, like you know, th there are a number of requirements of the, of the system. First of all, um, real-time baseband processing for spectrum sensing and agile transmission with high computational throughput and low latency. That's really important, okay? Because uh, if any one of those doesn't work, it, it's kind of it won't be realistic, right? Like not real-time uh, baseband processing. Um, well, that, then how, how are you going to operate uh, an entire network of these radios, potentially, when, when nothing's real time? The, that latency could be death. The integration of the physical networking layers in real time. That's also really important because we cannot do one without the other. Like, suppose you have Wi-Fi. What, what use is it that you receive the data if you cannot uh, look at how the data gets processed in terms of packets and uh, TCP IP and all that information to provide, let's say, streaming video or email or any of that? So it's really important to be as realistic as possible, potentially across multiple layers. Bandwidth is also important. Um, being able to transmit 
um, um, uh, you know, potentially high bandwidth signals across maybe um, a, a variety of different spectrum regions. So um, right now, there, uh, research has been uh, conducted on devising RF front ends of these software-defined radio platforms that can potentially have carrier frequencies across multiple gigahertz of frequency. And then finally, this idea of central processing of information between multiple radios, because what we want to do is we don't care about too much about like what happens in real world in the sense of everyone's kind of disconnected and has their own information. At the end, we want this to be part of a test bed and really evaluate how well the, the sort of real time operations of the network is. So we want to feed sort of the outcomes of all the wireless devices within the network to a central location to really sort of assess and figure out how well the network is doing as a whole. Plus, uh, we have a central point of control for the network so, so, sort of to, to, to create sort of reproducible experiments. Like, let's say user N uh, transmit a particular time instant and then say, oh, well, let's repeat the experiment again, but with a new modulation scheme. We can do it in, in precise timing with the precise user using the centralized control. Additional system requirements are things like um, again, perform the controlled experiments in different environments. Uh, so let's say in, in free space or in a shadowed environment or one with lots of multipath propagation. And then uh, also the ability to, to, to really emulate um, a variety of different wireless standards probably in that environment. And the reconfigurability and fast prototyping is really important because especially if we're trying to test things like cognitive radio and spectrally agile radios and such, this is going to be, um, a, we're going to need a platform that can do this on the fly, potentially in real time. So there are a variety of platforms that are currently available. Uh, here's just a, a sort of a short list of a few. Things like uh, the Rice University Warp Project, which possesses a few um, uh, Xilinx um, uh, FPGA boards or field programmable Gatorade boards, which we talked about earlier in this course. Uh, there's the Kansas University Agile Radio Project, uh, which was from several years ago that tried to make a comp compact form factor software-defined radio system that can be used for real-time experimentation. Uh, the Berkeley B Project that evolved now into a company called B Cubed. Um, the Motorola CMOS-based cognitive radio platform, which is an experimental wideband small form factor industrial prototype. And then the Maynooth, Maynooth um, uh, uh, adaptable radio system from uh, National University of Ireland, Maynooth, which um, built a co custom uh, small form factor SDR platform. So there are a variety of different efforts underway, and there are much, much more out there that I have not listed that are attempting to um, uh, sort of uh, uh, provide SDR solutions for the wireless experimentalist. So for instance, the uh, Berkeley B project, which now is its own company, uh, started at the uh, Berkeley Wireless Research Center, or B uh, BWRC, and attempted to create essentially a emula it's an emulation engine. So it, it, it tries to uh, create large scale wireless networks, but nothing's over the air. So it's supposed to be all rack mounted and uh, connect it. All the uh, RF components uh, of transmitters and receivers are all connected by fiber optic cables and, and, and RF connections. So nothing's really over the air, but then things are mimicked in terms of like channel conditions and, and traffic models of the different nodes within the network, such that you have a very compact uh, scenario for testing potentially large wireless networks. Then, uh, you also have the Motorola project, which uh, this is from several years ago, um, is an entirely encapsulated IC or integrated circuit based solution that uh, allows for flexible programming at the, uh, at the uh, baseband computational layer as well as at the RF frequency layer, which is called, um, the, the, we call radio frequency integrated circuit or RFIC. So as a result, you, this radio platform was capable of transmitting from 10 megahertz to 4 gigahertz with channel bandwidths from 8 giga kilohertz to 20 megahertz. Lastly, the Maynooth Agile Radio Project, or MARS, um, again, very wideband RF front end 
that supported multiple communication standards and also had full band support for a variety of different wireless applications and services. This actually integrated with um, another project from Ireland called IRIS, which was a software side of the Software Defined Radio project because it's essential that whenever you design a Software Defined Radio, you not only build the hardware, but you also hope because it's Software Defined Radio, you have the software modules to go along with it.